Hey, you guys, welcome back to Sir Paul's in Fitness Podcast. I'm here with Andy Howard. He is a motivational speaker, a best selling author, and he's also an Octavia coach. So, welcome, Andy. Hey, David, man, thanks for having me. I'm, I'm excited to do this. Yeah, I'm excited too. Um, we, we just had a converse, we just had a bit of a conversation outside of the podcast, and you, you mentioned to me how much you are important, the importance of your faith and how you battled your own obstacles and a bit about your, your daughter who has CP and how all that's kind of motivated you to push forward and pursue towards your goals and just keep going strong. And uh, I'm definitely excited to kind of go deep into detail, especially kind of start out this podcast about yourself. So give me a little bit of a background about yourself. How did you begin this journey? Hey, thanks so much. Uh, yeah, well, so how did I begin? 14 years ago, uh, and I'll never forget it, bro. Uh, we were at Dallas Children's Medical, uh, one of the biggest hospitals you know, in the world, but especially here in Texas uh, for, for children. And um, our daughter was uh, had, had an MRI of her brain, and we were at you know, the chief neurologist's office, and he walked in with a, a box of Kleenexes, and that's, you know, never a good sign, but he had told us uh, that our daughter had 10% brain function, uh, oh. that she would uh, never walk, or never talk, and if so, maybe a very limited uh, vocabulary of 150 words or less, that she might be able to use her arms to, like, hug a pillow or to give you a hug, but that she'd never be able to use her hands to, like, pick up you know, a pencil and that she was legally blind, uh, that wow. she, she could see colors and shapes, but she would never see the details. Like, uh, if, if she saw a tree driving down the road, she would see the green and the brown, but she would never be able to see the details of the leaves or, or the details of the, the bark of the tree. And it was somewhere after that point that, uh, it was kind of like, <laughs> he, he became, uh, like, Charlie Brown's teacher, his voice, it, it just kind of faded into the background. And I, I, I couldn't he, he really hear anymore. And it was just, I just wanted to get out of there. And you know what, even after that though, I, I am a man of faith. And I, I told my wife on the way home, you know, I'm going to, to beat down the doors of heaven every day until she got her healing. Uh, that's what I was believing for. But you know, God has a different way. And even with his, <laughs> with my prayer, I, I started praying, uh, God, you can use her story to reach millions. And I would say that prayer every day, you know, on to and from work. But what I, I didn't know is, is that God is using her story to reach millions. It's not the way that I had saw it. I, I thought, you know, somehow uh, her, her video would go virtual. I've heard, you know, you know, jumping out of her wheelchair or talking for the first time or, or running up and giving me a hug for the first time. And, and God has chose not to do it that way. But yet uh, I did just finish a book. It's called When Words Don't Come Easy. And God is using Peyton's story to reach millions of lives. And so I am grateful for that. And, and David, uh, I stumbled upon your podcast, man, and I'm seeing all the things that you're doing with your story and with your podcast and interviewing people. And I'm just grateful to be on here, man. You inspire me and and for, I don't know, thousands of people associated with CP. And so it's just an honor to be on here, bro. Uh, well, I, I definitely appreciate that. And you mentioned how you've, you've worked with the youth through faith. Uh, I myself, um, I used to be an assistant teacher, work with middle school students, and now I'm a youth advocate for at-risk youth, working with awesome, the uh, middle school youth that are um, that come from broken homes. Uh, parents might not be existent, or uh, you know, parents might be they might be living with a single parent where you know it's hard to make ends meet, and these kids are at risk of ending up on the streets or getting involved in gang activity or crime. And my job is to make sure that these kids. Uh, follow that right path and to keep them safe and to keep and to provide that positivity and that inspiration to them and um, it's funny because a lot of these kids uh, they first meet me and you know their first instinct is oh he's got a disability so we can mm -hmm. we can uh, we can sit we can do all these things but then they realize how powerful I am you know my words and who I am as a person that they're like you know what Mr. David's cool and he 
than I th- than I think he is, and so they kind of start building that respect and yes, and this, yeah, and in the six years I've done this with these kids, um, it's funny because I, they develop a profound respect for me, so I've never I never get disrespected. It's one of those things that you know, I come from a family of educators, so it's yeah. it's in my blood, you know, uh, it so it's like like yourself, we take pride in what we do. Yes. And I love that. And I, and I think no matter if you're watching this podcast, no matter who you are, uh, what has happened to you, maybe, uh, maybe it's, is something that you've been diagnosed with, or maybe, yes, maybe it's your job. You, you may, your identity is not what you do or what someone puts a label on you as your identity is for, for me, my identity is in Christ. So I'm a, I'm a son of God. I'm a son of the Lord. And I do my best just to see myself through, through that lens and, and not get stuck with uh, any label that someone may put on you or any uh, disability that someone puts on you. That's not who you are. That's just something you might contend with, but that's not who you are, man. And I love that, that you are uh, using this platform to, to make a difference. You're using your platform with the kids to make a difference. And that's what matters, bro. Yeah, you, know, you have to you have to find a. There's always a way. Where there's a will, there's a way. You know, you if you can't do it one way, you improvise and adapt and find another. Amen, for sure. And that's what. So that's what happened uh, with me. I didn't finish the rest of the story, but so I started off with those prayers, and they started off as earnest, uh, sincere prayers. But somewhere along the way, they they turned into uh, bitter, broken prayers. And, uh, and I, I went down a path into depression and, and even as a, a youth pastor, so I, I was, I had a smile on my face and, uh, I was doing my best to, to keep the facade uh, on, but I was hurting inside and I, I was broken and you know what God, and I share this story a lot when I'm speaking, God is not intimidated or, or scared of hard questions because I myself was asking, well, why us, Lord? <laughs> why us? I I thought if anyone deserved special treatment or a favor, it was that we, we don't get, we didn't get paid a lot as, as youth ministers. And it was never about the money. Honestly, yeah. it was always about making an impact in kids' lives right. and helping for, for the kingdom. But in, in a, in a sense, I was thinking what, well, if anyone deserved if anyone deserves special treatment, why did you allow this to happen? And I didn't always understand that, but here's the cool thing that happened. And we, we have some friends of ours who've never had been in our home at the time. They're also pastors. They're from Virginia and we live in Texas. So we're a long way away. But uh, she called me one day after uh, their morning service on a Sunday morning and said she had this vision that that God had gave her. And it was about Peyton. And and she saw her in her room and uh, she was sitting up in her hospital bed, even though her physical body was laying back in her bed. But she saw her spirit kind of sitting up, kind of crisscross applesauce, if you will. And uh, as the kind of the camera turned around, even though it was a vision, she said the angle of her came around. She realized that Jesus was at the foot of her bed and they were playing some kind of game. She said, I didn't pay attention to the game. That didn't matter if it was chess or checkers, but she realized that Peyton and Jesus were quite close. And she said, I could tell Andy, they were quite pals. And that was just so special for me uh, as a dad who was broken and hurting uh, to know that Man, I've been spending all this time feeling bad for all the things that Peyton is missing out on in my eyes, in my limited vision. Right. But what I didn't realize is my daughter's saying, oh, man, <laughs> I feel bad for all the things my dad's missing out on because I get to have this really close, good relationship with Jesus. And not that I don't have a relationship with Christ, but I don't know that I have the same relationship that she does. Cause I know without a shadow of a doubt now that, that God cares for her and he, he created her and he, he allowed everything to happen to her for this reason, uh, that we could use this story to help so many others who may be suffering from this, uh, same disease or same, uh, diagnosis. So anyways, man, I thought that was very cool that, that God has taken the time to uh, to be with my baby girl. And even when I don't see it always for the good, I do realize that there is a lot of good coming from yeah. this. 
Yeah, and the best part about uh, cerebral palsy nowadays is there's uh, so much uh, technology and advancements that uh, that even if um, you believe that your daughter might not be able to communicate, there is always technology out there that could assist them. And and you know, and I've I've met so many different people. Um, there was this one little little boy that I met uh, about. I'd say 12 years ago, I met him at a, uh, my, my best friend had a gig at Bongo's at downtown Disney and his, his, um, his uncle played the Bongo's and one day we were, we were leaving and he had seen me in the parking lot. He's like, well, I have, I have a, uh, a nephew who has cerebral palsy and it's very, and he's very, it's almost like your daughter's. And he's like, can you, can you meet him and, and my, my daughter, my daughter? Cause it's, cause I see you and it's like, you give me that, that power and that inspiration, and that blessing that you can give my, uh, my nephew and, and to help him push forward. And, and, uh, and now it's, it's pretty cool because what we've, we met and he's, he's a senior in high school now. Wow. And he uses a special communication device to communicate so it's it's no it's uh it's a, I tell people whether a doctor says you can't do this or you can't do that I was in that situation I was supposed to mm. never talk, read write walk or talk wow. or live a normal life uh, they said your son's gonna be a vegetable for the rest of your life you're gonna have to be their wow. caretaker and uh, I've had a lot of uh, experiences in my life you know. A family tragedy, lost my mom early in life at 23 years old. She passed away. Uh, basically, my future mm -hmm. was bleak. I was only eight years old. My future was bleak. And thankfully, uh, you know, God himself said, I'm going to take I'm going to take your mom, take the suffering, take the pain away from her, keep her away from this earth, you know, and take care of her and protect her. But I'm going to keep you here. And it made you made me it made you question. It makes you question. Why would you leave, uh, you know, a son here, you know, with this disability, and he can't, he can't fend for himself? But then he said, "I'm gonna make sure to keep you with a stepmom that's gonna mm -hmm. fight for you, that's gonna raise you, and that's gonna give you the life you, you need, and you have, you deserve to have." And I had a wonderful father too. And the beautiful thing about my family was, they all co-parented, so there was no malice mm -hmm. in between either of them, and. Uh, Fortunately, I had that stepmom that's that I would always that would always step up step up whenever the school system or anybody said, "Oh well, he can't do this, he can't do that." She would always instill in me, "You can do this and you can do that. You can't let people tell you no. You got to keep pushing forward. You got to keep never giving up and believe in yourself." And and I, I had a rough time in the education system, and and I pulled through it. I uh, made it through all my schooling, got my college degree, um, and here I am now being able to interview someone like you and getting Dude. to learn about your daughter and your story. Well, that's incredible, first of all. I mean, the more I hear about you, the more uh, <laughs> the more excited I get. Way to go, first of all. I just want to say congratulations, man, yeah. for fighting and for contending for all that. And uh, I love that uh, your stepmom and uh, she became your advocate just as much as, and I, I'm sorry to hear about your mom, but yeah. wow, how, how cool is that, that, uh, God, God always provides man. And he always brings someone along and I'm, I'm just proud of you for, uh, for never quitting, for never quitting, for keep, you, you keep contending and keep getting stronger and keep going after, uh, more dreams and more goals. And, and you yeah. are uh, inspiring so many people. Yeah, I mean that's that's the that's the key, especially when I deal with the kids that I deal with is when you have that one person that's willing to fight for you and step out and take you might take a small inch, but we'll take a mile and turn that into something special. And that's what we do yeah. ourselves with the youth. Man, it's it's true. And especially when you're young, uh <laughs> there there's so much that you don't know. And and at that moment, in those those pivotal years, those those youth years, they they seem so in, important. Uh, each even each day seems like it's the most important <laughs> day of your life. Just trying to get in in school and people and friends. I, it, it can be hard, man. Getting through those junior high years and high school years can be very hard. But but looking back, 
having someone who will uh, inspire you and someone who will uh, advocate for you like like you're doing to the kids is just so important. And so I'm just, yeah, that, that's very cool. And and for for you, like for when it when it comes for, for, to your daughter, ha, have you encountered any any like obstacles along the way trying to get her, um, I guess, the necessity she needs, medical care, uh, things like that, just go navigating through life in general? We we have had some obstacles, but with with her care, that's when, at least in Texas where we're from, uh, that's one thing that's been just top notch. Her her Medicaid that she's had uh, has taken care of everything she's needed, and you know what? Uh, we have she's got full time nursing here at the home, and that was one thing that uh, was a challenge for me uh, in the beginning as well. Uh, I'm I'm very much this is gonna be weird as someone who speaks a lot and as someone who does a lot of interviews and zooms like this, but I'm very introverted. <laughs> so I'm not an outgoing person. <laughs> I, I so, can tell. Yeah. Yeah. So when, uh, when, when I found out we were going to have, and we have about five nurses that work uh, 24 seven for Peyton, wow. but you know, they had, they became uh, like family to us. And in the beginning it was hard uh, finding that right uh, crew uh, to join our, join our team, join our family. But now uh, we wouldn't have it any other way. They love Peyton uh, just as much as we do, and they care for her so much and provide so much for her, and uh, we couldn't do it without them. So uh, it is just special having a, a group of it's, people who who love her. That's awesome. And and then for for you for you as parents, what was it like for you to find out when I guess she was first diagnosed? What how did you how did you take that? I'm sorry, it was breaking up. You said oh. something about since she was first diagnosed. How did how did you handle the the uh, situation when you found out she was first diagnosed? So from there, uh, me and Tiff, that's my wife Tiffany, uh, and she is a champion. She's a hero of, of mine. Uh, we both had different reactions, and I love, and I don't want it to sound. Uh, yeah, as yeah. If I, she wasn't good enough for me, or or something of, of that. Course. But it was mine went led to depression, as I talked about. Oh, okay. Tiffany, she became, she became this champion and this fighter. And in in fact, it, in a little bit, it made me feel worse. So here I am as the dad, you know. And I'm like, man, watching her, just step up. So Tiff was the one who who started. You're talking about all these things that are out there for people with disabilities. Tiff, she jumped into it. She's like, well, well, how can I find my daughter? Uh, at the time it, we started doing therapy, even at, at nine months old when we were getting her a uh, diagnosis, she's like, well, let's, they, they say, just like you said, the doctor said for you, well, she said, that's what they say, but we're going to give her the best possible outcome. And so we started uh, doing therapy and things right away. And she would take her to places for, for uh, where they were just trying to help her and teach her and, and all the different things, even at nine months. And that happened till about five years old. And that's when we uh, finally found out about or got qualified for the uh, the twenty four seven nursing care and, wow. and everything. So uh, she she really hasn't ever talked, um, but when she smiles or when she makes eye contact with you, like when I walk into a room and and she hears my voice, you can see her eyes looking for me. So I know she knows when I'm there. Uh, I know when I when I see her smile <laughs> that that she knows I'm there. And, and funny enough, she, she speaks to me with, with even her eyebrows. I can see by the way she'll like raise her eyebrows to me or, or things like that. So she is definitely communicating to me. I don't know this side of heaven that I will ever know what all she's wanted to tell me, but I, I know that, that she is special to me and she inspires me daily. Like when, when I'm having a bad day, <laughs> When I feel like, a, and, and now my health is very important to me. I try to work out a lot. I try to, I want to be strong enough when she is, when I am 60 years old or when I'm 80 years old, whatever that case, if she's still with us, that I'm able to help, you know, pick her up out of her bed and put her in her wheelchair or, or vice versa. So now when I'm having a bad day, trying to run a mile or trying to do a workout set i think about my baby girl and, and she inspires me so she keeps me moving that's just most important you know find that uh that key logic support system that one person 
uh they'll they'll keep you they'll keep you moving they'll keep you motivated and uh you don't give up on anything easily you know for sure man yeah never never give up <laughs> never give up hope uh our hope i keep my hope grounded in in christ and my faith but uh we, we we never give up and i do know one day uh she will ultimately uh be healed man healed completely and whether that's here or whether that's in heaven but it's gonna be worth it it's gonna be worth it all uh by by holding on to that faith yeah don't don't give don't give up you know just keep going and and don't don't let uh don't let doctors you know dis- discourage you because you know, so, sometimes they they can be right. Sometimes they can be wrong. It's almost like a weather prediction. You know, one day it right. tells you it's going to rain, but it doesn't. Um, you know, it's it's one of those things. You know, you just gotta you just gotta keep stand your ground and keep, sure. keep what you believe in. And then, um, and then I also I also uh, so you've done you've done motivational speaking, and then you're also in a uh, I don't know how to say it. It's not. Tavia coach what what is that exactly yeah so uh, it's actually pronounced uh, Optavia, Optavia but I know it, okay. it's a it's a weird spelling but uh yeah it's Optavia so it's a health and wellness program and uh, my wife and I uh, found it so another one of my areas of, of uh contending with is my health I mentioned that a, a little bit ago but at one time in my life I weighed 345 pounds wow. uh, my wife yeah yeah I mean my wife weighed 317 pounds and so now uh we we stumbled uh on this program in our health journey, this has probably been seven years ago that we started coaching and I uh, started the program and then started coaching. And it's crazy. The thing that almost uh, killed us uh, food and being addicted and just being so obese yeah. and so sick has been something that has helped us uh, transform thousands of lives. We've been able wow. to help other people uh, uh, find hope and find health and so uh, that's that's something that's very uh, we're passionate about. We, we're uh, healthy now, and and we just love helping, uh, motivating people and helping them uh, find hope themselves. Hey, that's 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 fantastic, and congratulations! Wow. Hey, hey thank you. Uh, I'm just man. I'm honored uh, <laughs> honored to be here with you talking about it. But you know, uh, it's yeah. something that we take one day at a time. It's a journey. Our health is a journey. Our our faith is a journey. Our our mindset with with depression yes, and talking about overcoming is a journey. And so we take each day. We try to live it to the fullest and uh, try to help as many people as we can. Yeah, like for like for me, uh, they give you a little bit of a background on my fitness journey. Um, I started mine when I was uh, 13, 14 years old. Um, they I went to the doctor. And the doctor said, because I used to live a very sedentary lifestyle. And, you know, with, with having cerebral palsy, you know, if you don't, if you're not very active, uh, your muscles, you know, they can, they can uh, struggle and then you can end up back in the wheelchair. And then one day my doctor, my doctor, you know, my doctor told me, and that's when it hit me. And, and I told him, you know, and I tried, I tried physical therapy, you know, I did go do physical therapy when I was a kid, you know, did normal therapy, occupational physical therapy. And then as I got to be an adult, uh, you know, physical therapy is, is like, it's, I mean, I, this is my, this is my opinion, but it's, it was so difficult to obtain because you go to an office, you know, they give you a couple sessions of therapy and they give you yeah. a sheet of paper and they go, and then they charge you. And one yeah. day, I look, one day I look at the bill and it's like $300. And I look at the bill and I'm like, how can someone like me who needs physical therapy constantly uh, and then somebody who, I mean, obviously I had a job at the time, but I'm like, if somebody did not have a job, has a disability, can't afford this, how can yeah. they afford medical care? Mm-hmm. You know, and it's, uh, you know, and I, I don't like to be political and things like that, but how? And then I told myself, you know what? I'm never going to a physical therapist again. I'll go invest in the gym. And I've done that ever since I've been going to the gym. I do my own workouts. Wow. I train people online various workouts i've had people reach out to me asking me can you train me i trained my best friend who was uh slightly overweight and i ha- he lost about 20 30 pounds just you know having me coach him and people would look at me in the gym and they'll they'll ask me 
is he coaching you or are you coaching him? And I'm like, I'm coaching him. And they look at me, they're like, there's no, there's no way. <laughs> I'm like, awesome. I'm like, yeah. And I've done, I've done this for 17, 18 years. And I have was a three sport athlete, former three time state champion cyclist. And then you know, I've done it all. Now I'm here. That's incredible, man. That's incredible. I love every bit about it. And then you're not only did you take that, but but you're helping others with it. So yeah, but three times state champion cyclist. I love that. Yep, it's incredible what the uh, the uh, power of believing in yourself and not letting your disability or define you. You know what you do with that disability is what sh- what should define you, not the label. Man, that's good. That's good. Especially, especially in, in in your situation with your daughter, you know, it's like you're show, you're showing the world what she's capable of, despite that label. Man, and uh, I'm proud of you for that, bro. And uh, so many people, <laughs> we 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 use excuses, we use limitations, we use mindset as, as obstacles to uh to prevent us from doing whatever and i think whatever your biggest challenge is whatever your your biggest obstacle is could be the very thing that that you're meant to to hurdle so that you can help others along the way and so i i'm just uh, proud to see you doing that and i uh, keep contending man keep going I, pr- I appreciate you man and i was gonna say I, I like the i like the quote in your background over there with the, i think it's kobe right that that is kobe yeah, i love that I, man I love Kobe and I love his most of all uh his, his work ethic that he that he had, you know, that he he wasn't uh dude, he was never going to be outworked and he was very talented, don't get me wrong, he was one of the best, but yet even being one of the best you'd think that gave him an excuse to to quit working hard, but he he still would had a work ethic that was second to none. And so I've heard so many stories about him uh, being the first one in the gym and the last one in the gym. And that just, that inspires me. Yeah. And, and, and I, I know that in the world, it was a huge shock when he, when he had passed away with his, with his daughter. And like, I yeah. mean, it, it, it really hit, I mean, it transcended this, mm-hmm. the uh, sporting industry as a whole. I mean, everybody, oh, yeah. everybody knew who Kobe was, whether you're, you were a casual fan or a hardcore fan or not even a fan of basketball at all. Everybody knew what Kobe is. And that's something we aspire to be. It's it? it's true, man. It was, uh, gosh, I'll never forget. Uh, just all the text messages started coming in and it was almost like, no, you know, no uh, way. It's surreal, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it was surreal. Cause we just, I don't know. I guess he he always looked like a, a Superman or like he was bulletproof, and, and you thought not not Kobe, but uh, it, it was just a tragedy for sure. But his life, uh, he he lived. We talk about exactly what we've been talking about on this podcast. He lived his life to the fullest, and and it inspired so many people. And I think each person could take away from that, uh, no matter what. Maybe you're not a basketball player, but what do you do? Great. What is that? Uh, do it to the best of your ability and help others along the way. Right. And that's what we, we aspire to be. I mean, we don't aspire for, for, for me, it's uh, doing this podcast. It's not about the recognition of the fame, but the fact that I'm able to change lives through uh, the podcast itself. Like you were mentioning depression. Um, I helped out an individual years ago who I interviewed who on air told me that because she started listening to my podcast and, um, she she struggled with depression herself to the point where she told me you know on the on our episode that she's like because of you and your podcast it made me reconsider not committing suicide wow. and uh she said it made so when i listened to your podcast that i listened to your to you it made me realize i have a family i have a daughter a husband and wow. I just can't leave this. And because of you, you saved my life in this podcast. And, wow. And thank Amen. You. And and it was in the middle of our it was in the middle of our podcast. And I was just left speechless. And uh for man. a good two, three minutes, I can really I can really speak. That's incredible, man. It's, real, it's that power, you know, that that strength. It was it was surreal. 
I'm sorry. It was, it was breaking up towards the end. But yeah. I, I think I got the gist of everything. But when you, when you said that she told you on the podcast, um, basically your podcast helped save her life. That is what, that's what this is about, man, about helping others. And how cool is that? And that's what I, I, I wrote my book. It's called When Words Don't Come Easy. And so it, it, it talks about a lot of the stuff we've already talked about tonight, but the main part about coming through depression and getting on the other side. And I want to do the same. I hope that my, uh, my story and Peyton's story can help others, whether it, it may not be the same exact details to the story, but maybe you're dealing with depression. Maybe you're having suicidal thoughts yourself, whatever it is. I'm hopeful that our story will help you uh, contend and push through that. Yeah. And, and uh, what I loved about your story is the fact that um, your wife, in a sense, she became not just not just Peyton's rock, but your rock. She helped you. It's true, man. <laughs> uh, she helped both of you become yeah. overcome obstacles. Yeah, she's together. a champion, man. And uh, she she's inspired. She is inspiring. She inspires me daily, too. And uh, she is. Gosh, she has helped so many uh, thousands of people, and she's the main cog in in our business as a uh, independent Optavia coach. Uh, she helps in thousands and inspires thousands to be healthy, and then not only that, but she teaches them how to become coaches as well. And so it, it really has been fun watching her in her element. Uh, she speaks to thousands of people, and this past summer was a. Uh, spoke at state farm arena there in Atlanta wow. where the Hawks play. And yeah, there was, gosh, I don't know, maybe 20,000 people in there. And so and she just really is a, she's an inspiration. Yeah. Well, well, I, I have to say this, it's not just her, the inspiration, but you and you and Peyton and this, the you guys as a whole family are inspiring. That's, that's incredible. Well, thank you. Well, thank you so much, really? man. It's been fun getting to do this to, tonight. And uh, if I could, I'd love to, just in case anyone might want to find the book, I'd love to tell them where. But yes. if you go to my go, website, go it's, yeah, it's at andyhoward.com. So A-N-D-Y Howard.com. And uh, that'll just, it'll take you wherever. Uh, I even do it for uh, Audible as well, if you uh, prefer listening. Uh, and then if you're a Kindle person, you can find it there in, in Kindle as well. But uh, I, I would be honored just to get the story out to as many people as possible. And uh, just here to uh, to be a blessing to as many people as possible. That's that's the that's the key word is to be a blessing. Amen. You know, it's to Amen. be that's a blessing. It's to, it's to make sure uh, one of the things that I always tell people is uh, before uh, you take care, before you love someone else, make sure to love yourself first. If you love yourself Amen. first, you can spread that love to others that need it. Dude, that is good. That is so good. It's kind of like the uh, the analogy for anyone you know, who's ever flown, but they always talk about if the oxygen mask falls, you know, and you have kids, they say put it on yourself first and then help your kid put it on. And it's the same thing. It, you, you do no good for your kids or any of your neighbors if if you pass out <laughs> first. And so that's the whole point. Yeah, love yourself first. And that is so good because uh, if you're depressed or fall into a, a depression, you can't help others. And so take care of yourself first and then see who else we can help along the way. That's really cool. All right. Ex exactly. And I, I appreciate you for coming here and sharing your story. And 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 it's it's been incredible. It's been wonderful. Um, and I hope that uh, my listeners can can take a lot of knowledge and experience and expertise and not give up. So if you guys want to find this episode, you're going to find it on YouTube, iTunes, Spotify, and every other major podcasting outlet out there. Andy, thank you, my brother. Appreciate hey, you. Hey, David, thank you. It was so fun doing this and fun getting to catch up with you. And uh, best of luck to you as you keep going, bro. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, it was, it was a lot of fun. Th thank you, man. I appreciate you. And everybody I appreciate you definitely and have a wonder have a wonderful night everybody stay safe out there